The Korean automakers are holding a firm number two position in the EV market here in North America. They're combining for about 8.3% of the EV market, and that EV market is only about 5.3% of the total vehicle market. But that gives them enough of an edge to beat out Ford, which has 7.3% of the market. And we know the majority of the market goes to none other than Tesla. But the Koreans are about ready to take another leap with their efficiency. The eGMP platform from Hyundai is known to have some of the fastest charging on the market with their 800 volt system. But the full potential of the fast charging eGMP platform is about ready to be unlocked. <laughs> Over at ST Microelectronics, we're getting a boost to EV performance and driving range with new silicon carbide power modules. Now this write-up is extremely technical, so we're gonna head to Inside EVs. They break it down for us a little bit better here. If you're new to the channel, my name's Kirk. This is Kirky Cars, where I break down industry auto news that pertain to anything electrified. Subscribe, hit the bell icon, and let's get back into it. This new module ensures the greatest power density and energy efficiency, resulting in superior vehicle performance, range, and charge time. The SIC power modules are made in Catania, Italy, and they can charge up to 1200 volts, have direct liquid cooling, and multiple bus bar options for EV manufacturers. This could decrease charging times, but I'm not getting my hopes up for that. But what I am excited for is the increase in efficiency. They're saying this could increase the range up to about 5%. Every single eGMP model, their rear motors already feature an 800 volt silicon carbide power unit for the rear motor inverter. But the front motor inverter has been using a 400 volt system. So more than likely the only efficiency you will be seeing is on all wheel drive models. Getting our calculator out, we'll be able to get some range increases here, which is pretty exciting. Who knows when they'll be able to employ these? I think it sounds like it's going to be happening very soon. So a, a nice little upgrade here, probably for the 2024 model year, maybe 2025. But hey, a little like 5% here and there every single year, every other year is where we need to get to. All right. So let's start with the EV6 GT line dual motor. Uh, this is the Edmunds EV test, so it gets 283 miles on that range, 5% here, which is 14 miles. So the dual motor EV6 will be getting nearly 300 miles of range. Now, that's about, it's average 5%, so it could be more, it could be less, and maybe they find some ways to improve the efficiency of the rear motor inverter as well. The 297 would help them leapfrog all these other models here in the lineup and get them inside the top 20 for total miles. We look at the GV60 performance here and we're going to add 5% to that and it gets it to 287 miles. A tasty little snack of an upgrade there and then we're gonna look at the Ionic 5 which surprisingly got less range than the GV60 performance. Uh, I mean, you gotta take in consideration, they do the same test, but sometimes their temperatures change, things like that. I mean, the difference of four miles is essentially a margin of error. So 270 plus 5%, another 13 miles, so 283 miles of range out of the dual motor Ionic 5, which I think the Ionic 5 is a better deal than the GV60 performance. I like the interior of it better, and it just seems like a better overall package in the GV60, even though the GV60 performance is stupid fast. I just wouldn't need that sort of performance every day. I think 320 horsepower of the dual motor is adequate, but definitely check out my review of the GV60 performance as well as the EV6 GT line dual motor and the Ionic 5 dual motor. Other big news for Hyundai, they're teaming up with SK to build US EV battery plant in Georgia. It will start producing batteries in 2025 and bring in about $4 billion to $5 billion in investment in the plant in the surrounding county. This is good news because the Koreans no longer qualify for the EV tax credit with the new situation. Uh, and since they don't build any EVs in America quite yet, I think the GV70 will be the first one here shortly for Genesis and built in Alabama. They also need their battery packs to be sourced from North America and the minerals to be sourced 
from uh, free trade countries with North America, well, for, for the United States specifically. So it looks like they're going to be get their ducks in a row to make sure that their vehicles will qualify for the EV tax credit, but that probably won't happen until 2025 or so. I don't see anything here about gigawatt hours. I would assume uh, it would be around 20 or 30 gigawatt hours for this plant, but exciting to see nonetheless. And we're going to switch gears. Heading over to Japan EV news, uh, Hitachi Metals developing EV motors with less China rare earths. Hitachi aims to replace magnets that use neodymium, the strength of which plays a crucial part in making high-performance motors. Hitachi's alternative magnet is expected to boost supply chain resilience, something that nearly every single automaker outside of China is trying to do. They don't want to be reliant on China anymore. It's just too much out of their control and it's really hurting their profits. It's better to make a vehicle with reduced profits than no vehicle at all. And that's what's been going on with the surprise supply shortages. So China is said to have a 90% share in the global neodymium market. Magnets also use uh, dysprosium, another rare earth metal that can be mined at a low cost in China, which Japan relies on for the metal. Dysprosium is added to increase heat resistance. Hitachi is now developing ferrite-based magnets, which are about one-fifth the price of neodymium magnets and made mainly from widely available iron oxide. But until now, ferrite magnets have not been used in EV motors because of their strength, which affects motor output. And it's typically only one-tenth that of neodymium magnets. So Hitachi Metals has devised a way to position and populate ferrite magnets in EV motors to increase motor rotation speed and achieve the same maximum output as their neodymium counterparts. And so I was thinking, well, they're probably just stuffing a bu bunch of these magnets in there to get to the same sort of output. But the crazy thing is it's not going to increase weight. Motor weight and size will remain unchanged and the cost of each magnet per unit weight will be one fifth to one tenth of that neodymium magnet. This could ultimately reduce motor costs. This sounds almost too good to be true, but it sounds like it's going to happen. And the, the breakthroughs like this need to happen to make electrified vehicles cheaper. Every single vehicle that's electrified, whether it's a hybrid or even a fuel cell, they have electric motors in them and cheaper electric motors is, a, is best for everyone, right? And so if we have the same weight and efficiency for five to 10 times cheaper price, rest in peace, neodymium magnet motors, Welcome to ferrite-based magnets. It is the future. And last bit of news here for the EV autos. Honda, long-term stable procurement of EV batteries from CATL in China. Procurement of 123 gigawatt hours of batteries for EVs in the EN series by 2030. These vehicles are exclusive to China and these batteries will be exclusive to China. So nothing to get too excited for, but Honda, is separating as much as possible the supply chain for China and the supply chain for their next biggest market, which is North America. Um, yesterday, I talked about the tiny little in-wagon EV that they're going to make in Japan. It's a K car for 7,500 bucks. That's exciting. Don't know what kind of batteries are going to be in there. Wouldn't be surprised if it's CATL. Uh, but in North America, they're working with LG, aka General Motors, aka Gondam. Uh, to procure all those batteries for those EVs by 2025, I think is when that plant goes online with LG and Honda. Uh, the Prolog comes out in 2024. ZDX comes out in 2024 for Acura, and there will be a Type S. So Honda really trying to stabilize their supply chains for their prospective markets, and globalism is starting to crumble in, in some ways. So uh, it'll be fun to see how all that happens in the future. Make sure to stay tuned for more industry auto news, especially when it comes to EVs. This is Kirk from Kirky Cars. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day. Take care of yourselves and peace.